Hello, everyone. We are going to have so much fun today. We have with us today the producer, Alicia Geddes of Solution Time, along with the co-creator and host, Zach Atherton. Uh, they're taking comedy as a cure for the world's big problems. So stick around. You want to learn about this. Welcome to the Your Mark on the World show with your champion of social good, Devin D. Thorpe. This episode is made possible via the support of our sponsors, including Johnson & Johnson's Caring Crowd. Alicia, Zach, welcome to the show. Thanks for having Thank us. Thank you. Oh, we're thrilled to have you and excited to learn more about this. Uh, Alicia, where did this idea come from? I, I, I work at Brigham Young University and I am constantly exposed to some of the best solutions to social problems. And I realized that hardly anyone knew about those problems or about those solutions. And I felt like I needed to create a mechanism to get more solutions out to the world. So uh, what did you decide to do? Um, I, one, of the, um, one of the tools for solving solutions to social problems is using design thinking. And so through the design thinking process, I brought together a group of students, including Zach Atherton, and we started thinking about how we could give great solutions a voice. Zach, so tell me about your take on uh, Solution Time. You're the host. Uh, what does this all mean to you? Solution time is a way to be able to translate some of the big problems that are hard to or easy to misunderstand and also to connect people with solutions that are happening all over the place. We found like uh, that there are academics and there are people who are solving problems, but it's difficult for them to translate it for you and me. A lot of us are really attracted to sexy ideas and that those are the ones that latch on, but they're often not the ones that matter. So we found if we were able to find a way to turn it into a, a digestible chunk, put it out through comedy, that it would increase the chances of person in destination A connecting with destination C and actually getting the resources they need. Alicia, you put together a, shall we call it a pilot, mm -hmm. uh, that has already been shared on Facebook and out there and people are watching it and getting excited by it. Tell us about that episode and how it came together. Well, um, I, about a year ago, I discovered, um, one that homeless veterans was still a major issue here in America. And I, I just found that quite shocking, um, that anyone who has, um, served our country would be on the streets. And I also thought that it was an issue that was bipartisan, that both sides of the political spectrum really cared about getting our vets off the streets. And I also discovered that it was one of the social issues that has decreased by almost 50% in the last 10 years. And as you know, very few social issues have had that kind of um, turnabout. And so we thought it would be a great solution um, to highlight. And we, we think what's, oh, the other thing that's crazy is it's been government initiated for this solution. And very rarely do we hear about government, government initiated solutions that are working so spectacularly. So we just thought it was a wonderful story of, um, of our country coming together um, on a particular social issue. Zach, how do you feel about it? You, you, you host the show, you, you did a brilliant job, but now, you know, just between us and everyone who watches this video, uh, what do you really think is going on? Uh, we're terrible. We should, should never have done it. It was a bad idea. <laughs> uh, no, it was, uh, it was, what was so cool to me is you think about something like veteran homelessness. You think, we all see them. We see them with uh, uh, a lot of Korea hats and people not coming back from the Middle Eastern wars. And it's like, that, that stinks. What are we going to do for them? And when Alicia with her connection with the ballot center told me that there was a city that eradicated it. I, I was a, initially taken aback say, why, why, do, why does no one know about this? Why isn't this on CNN? Why isn't this on MSNBC? A mayor took the initiative to say, we're going to cure it in our city and we're gonna do it in six months. And then they did it. And so we said, this is a solution that would be easy for us. And it's bipartisan. It wasn't, uh, it wasn't the liberals idea. It wasn't the conservatives idea. It was everyone coming together saying, we can do this and putting aside their differences and making it happen. 
And I think it was a very fun to work on a topic that is maybe tricky, maybe controversial, maybe sensitive, but be able to highlight the story of the people that it changed in such a simple way. So it was really, really cool. Alicia, what do you think the uh, solution was? What were the keys to success in this program? Well, if I tell you, are you still going to watch the episode? <laughs> <laughs> of course. <laughs> I've watched it, but I know you have. <laughs> Thank you. Um, I think that um, it I, it's multiple parties coming together. Often, if you can get the mayor of a community to spearhead this movement, that's when you're going to see quick results. Now, if a mayor is not quickly spearheading this movement, then us as citizens, we can reach out to our mayor and say, hey, this is really important to us. And then from there, it's the mayor and all of the nonprofits that are involved with solving veteran homelessness coming together and working collaboratively. Can we find the gaps that aren't being addressed? What are the overlaps? What are we duplicating in our efforts? And then together as the nonprofits and the governments come together, um, it's shown that it has been effective in getting veterans off the, off the streets. Uh, what I love about this, a lot of people will say, well, what about PTSD and mental illness? And um, we've still had tens of thousands of veterans who struggle with those issues still get off the streets. Yeah. Fascinating uh, discussion. You know, I, I was uh, talking to uh, a couple of folks this morning, uh, recording another episode, one of whom was uh, a young man who'd experienced years of homelessness. He's not a veteran, but uh, it was interesting. Uh, we talked about drug and, and drug addiction, which is clearly a, an issue we see with homelessness. But it was interesting. He described that as a symptom of homelessness, not a cause of homelessness. Uh, and it's interesting to frame that. Uh, I, I, I couldn't comment on whether that is always true or statistically true, but it is an interesting way to think about uh, drug addiction and and trying to move people out of homelessness before we force them to uh, uh, you know r rather than forcing them to, to give up their drug addiction in or before we take them off the streets well, right. what, what do you think Zach well I mean I think a lot of people have a stigma or an idea of homelessness well they're there because they want to be or they made poor choices Oftentimes they're there because they have no other choice. And then it's not a, a, the chicken before the egg is that there's the homelessness and the drugs, not necessarily bad decisions to lead to homelessness. And so the most, not only the only humane thing to do is for them, but the most economically feasible thing to do is to help them. It can cost upwards to 90 to $100,000 per year in emergency uh, visits, ambulances, medical care for these uninsured veterans who, are, who aren't going to pay for, uh, when they're brought to these hospitals that have to treat them. And what was interesting in our research and in the guests that we brought on was told that not all homelessness is simply give them a home, which is what, you know, uh, seems like a novel idea of, oh, we'll just give them all homes. Oftentimes it's just give them a few services they need before they get to homelessness. Oftentimes some people are like two or three paychecks away from homelessness and they just need some food. Sometimes they just need a little bit of help. And if cities can be proactive in that, then they never become homeless and they never become, uh, they have all those issues that come with it. Yeah, yeah. Uh, powerful observation. Uh, Alicia, as you think back across your experience there at BYU and the Ballard Center, what's the most, uh, th the thing that you're most proud of having accomplished? Well, I am quite proud of accomplishing this show. I'm not to, t I mean, I'm so proud of everything that we're doing at the Ballard Center. I'll say this, um, the Ballard Center, for those that aren't familiar with it, is designed to help Brigham Young University students do good better. Uh, many of the students learned acts of compassion growing up, but they didn't learn what it meant um, to solve social problems. So they learned how to rake their neighbor's lawns, and they learned how to bake casseroles for mothers who just had babies, but they didn't learn how to get people off the street. And I'm, I, I'm really proud that we do that at the Ballard Center. And my hope is that we get to translate that over into solution time, is give people tools to solve social problems. Uh, Zach, 
As you uh, went through the program there at BYU, what was the most important lesson you think you learned? Uh, uh, with in conjunction with the Ballard Center or just the university? Either one. Uh, so I did a joint degree. I have my master's of public administration, which Alicia also has, and a, and a juris doctorate. And the thing that impressed me most about the master's program, which was the part that I can't speak for every program there, but that they cared most about the impact in the world. You know, a lot of people go to school for money, advancement, prestige, but the absolute, uh, almost I would call it divine direction of the faculty and the students is we are here to make an impact on the world. We've got one life, we've got one career, and we want to spend it helping those less fortunate and helping those who are trying to get, trying to be good, be better. And that was an amazing thing to experience. That's cool. Alicia, obviously you're a bright, capable person and you could be doing anything. Why, why do you want to focus on making the world a better place? Oh, I'm, I feel like it's part of my life's mission to give great solutions a voice. And I'm, um, as I, work towards alleviating any social problem, that's what makes me feel alive. Excellent. Well, Zach, what is your superpower? I'm not the funniest comedian in the whole world, but I'm also, and I'm also not the greatest academic, uh, but I do say that I'm probably the most unnecessarily educated comedian there is. <laughs> uniquely qualified for a show like this, where I need to sound smart enough to know what I'm talking about and have enough content knowledge to care and have the timing to do so. So that's been a really awesome fit for me to work with Alicia because we went through the program, we know what is going on, we, we read the Ballard briefs, we've done the research, we've gone through the scoring to understand, but we also both have a deep passion for comedy and we see and understand innately how that translates to people, how that reaches people and how that makes people feel rather than just, here's a very heavy thing we're asking you to do, or here's a very thick informational check of, of uh, stuff for you to slog through and then change your life. So it's a fun place for us to be in that middle ground. Alicia, what, uh, what is your superpower? I believe that my superpower is bringing the right people together to make things happen. Um, so with um, the, the pilot of, the, of Solution Time on Ending Veteran Homelessness, I what it looks like today is not what it's going to look like tomorrow. So I would say it's the leadership to bring the right people together and the humility to change. And uh, we're really excited about the team that we're going to continue to build um, with our future episodes. And um, as we go out and tackle any social problems, we hope, I hope Devin that my show's not necessary in 10 years. Yeah. Well, I hope so too. Yeah. It's a shame though, that no one at BYU will be able to watch this. And why is that? Well, because uh, Zach has a beard. Oh. <laughs> yeah, there, there's a beard filter on campus, and we're gonna <laughs> oh, well, they just out. they'll block the beard so people they can know. watch the show. I see. Yeah. I didn't realize I didn't realize they had that technology at BYU. That'll be very good. They let caffeinated coke on, so we can only dream. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Zach, Alicia, it's been great to have you on the show. I really appreciate you taking the Thanks, time. Devin. Before you go, I wonder, Alicia, if you'd take a minute and tell people how they can learn more about Solution Time, how they can watch the episode, and how they can connect with you personally. Wonderful. Yeah, um, our website, solutiontime.tv, um, has the answers to all of those questions. If they're more of a Facebook fan, they can connect with us at Solution Time TV. Fantastic. And, and Zach, how do people connect with you? Uh, well, all of those social media links that they have, if they want to see me up close and personal, they can come to my theater anytime on Ninth Feast in Provo. It's Improv Broadway. Uh, we're, we're not just doing a, a, a service through here, but we're all trying to change the world through comedy on a local level by helping connect uh, uh, local comedians to, be, to other people to be able to help them grow their lives and expand the community that way. So check us out. Fantastic. Well, I want to thank both of you for taking the time to be with us today, and we wish you every success in the great work that you're doing. Awesome. Thanks, Devin. All right. Let's do some good. At Caring Crowd, we believe everyone has the power to make a difference. Through our crowdfunding platform for community health, we empower passionate people to drive real change. Whether you work for a nonprofit organization, volunteer, or want to get involved for the first time, 
you can post a campaign on Caring Crowd. Join us, because caring is where change begins. Thank you for listening. Devonthorpe's mission is to end extreme poverty, improve global health, and mitigate climate change before 2045 by finding and sharing the stories of those who are doing the most good. You can join with other listeners to accelerate Devon's mission by visiting helpdevon.org right now.